Welcome to Supercharge with Digital Market Star, the bi-weekly podcast where we discuss everything related to entrepreneurship and how marketing is important for your success in business venture. I'm your host and also the founder of Market Star, Crystal. Let's welcome Giovanni, our guest for today's episode. So Giovanni is an aspiring videographer based in LA. He started his business a while ago and has since uh, we had the honor of having his work featured in the Super Bowl commercial and I have had the pleasure of working with Giovanni in the past. We were at the red carpet event together last year and it was a fantastic experience and Giovanni is an amazing person. So in today's episode, we will take a closer look at Giovanni journey of becoming a videographer and discuss his recent success in the video industry. So let's dive in. Okay, to get started, Giovanni, can you share a little bit about yourself? Yeah, sure. So, hello, my name is Giovanni Chavez. Um, my company is called GLC. That's what most people call me, is just Geo. Um, but just a little bit about myself. I'm in my low 20s. I'm 23 years old, and I run a production company. So a lot of people know me for my videography. For the most part, I do take pictures from time to time, but most of the time I do a lot of fun uh, videography and production. And so um, I just originated uh, doing the work here at home, uh, just in my bedroom. And even till today, I still do it that way. I still live with my parents, actually. And uh, I've gotten the opportunity to do some pretty crazy things just um, by having some hope and working hard. Yeah, that's amazing. And how did you first become interested in videography and what inspired you to pursue this other's career? So it's an it's a very interesting story. I actually want to write a book about it one day, uh, crazy enough, but this is how it happened. So I used to be a musician. Not, I was not even in like that kind of industry of filmmaking or photography or production, none of that. I was uh, creating music covers with my saxophone here in my room. And I, I got some like traction on Instagram and um, I ended up becoming an artist for like a mouthpiece brand. And then I was interviewed on Telemundo and I was performing in LA Fashion Week and I was going to college at the same time. So all that was happening way before I was doing all of this stuff. Um, but the thing is, and I feel like this is going to be inspiring for like some people to hear. So at the age of 18, I was actually diagnosed with lumbar arthritis. And so technically I'm physically disabled. And so at, at the age of 18, fresh out of high school, you know, I get diagnosed with this thing and I'm here using a saxophone and trying to pursue a music career. And I was going to college. Um, about two years later, I um, had to actually have an emergency surgery. And so I had to go out of the country and I had uh, to have my spine um, basically opened up and they had to put an implant and it was about six months of recovery. It was pretty intensive. I had to learn how to walk again. It was it was very, very bad. And so because of all this, I had to stop going to school and I couldn't carry a saxophone, obviously, because I had spinal surgery, so I can't carry an instrument. And because of that, I lost all my connections with LA Fashion Week. I lost all my connections with the brand. I stopped being promoted by a lot of uh, companies that were like, you know, showing my music. And I lost thousands of followers, even though I was actually like letting people know on my social platforms that like, hey, um, you know, like I'm going through it right now. Like I had surgery. I can't use my instrument like I just can't like I'll hurt myself if I try to do that. And so um, eventually after some time while I was recovering on bed, I was just like, you know, I, I'm just not feeling as passionate about the music as much as I used to just because like because like how life was happening. And I was like so young in my 20s, I was barely 20 years old. And, you know, having to go through that kind of stuff, it's it's detrimental, especially like mentally and not just physically. And so one day I was laying in bed and I was just watching YouTube videos and I, I like ran into some people in the creative space, like Peter McKinnon and Daniel Schiffer at the time. And I just watched like these people making all these cool films. And at the time, all I had was a Canon 80D. And I was like, you know what? I mean, it's it's not like music, but it's something creative. So maybe I can get into it. And so because I couldn't walk, I couldn't just go out and start filming. So I was just learning the basics of like, you know, the 
um, how to use ISO, how to use a shutter speed aperture, how to, you know, understand simple lighting techniques, just the very basics. And I was learning everything through YouTube. I never went to school for any of this kind of stuff. And so about, I would say six to eight months later, I was able to, you know, start walking normally again. Um, and then COVID happened. And so because of that, I didn't, I didn't go back to school. And so I was just kind of stuck at home after recovering and like, you know, finding a new passion. So I just started making little skits um, here at home and just filming my sister and like my friend at the time. There's an old video that's like the coffee B-roll because like at the time, coffee B-roll was what like it was all about. And so I was just doing all those kind of things. And then eventually I was like, you know what, maybe I should like step outside and do something with it, like not just like film inside of my house. And so I went out and I started to just take pictures with my friends out in like the street out in Riverside. Uh, it's nearby. And so I was just kind of doing that kind of stuff. And then one day I was going to a restaurant. I was I was going to get pokey. I love pokey, by the way. And um, I was standing on top of a table because I only had like a 50 millimeter. So I couldn't have like a wide angle lens. And I stood all the way on top and I took a picture in front of the restaurant and then I posted it. And then they actually reached out to me and they said, hey, can you film a video? Like if the picture looks really nice and uh, we saw that you're standing in, on top of our tables, um, would you like be interested in maybe filming a video for like our store? And I was like, oh, well, I mean, I've been practicing. And so I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? And so I just bought uh, some cheap Amazon lights. And at the time I, I had upgraded to a Fuji X-T4. And so I just went and filmed the Pokey restaurant. And then that's when I get all like kind of started. So filmed it in one day they gave me free food and a t-shirt that was like my pay you know so it, that's where it starts off and so a week later after all that like i went to a camera store and in this camera store they were actually starting like a marketing company and so what they were doing was also pushing a lot of like production and wanting to film and so i i went in there and i showed it to them i was like hey i made this like like pokey uh, restaurant commercial about a week ago down the street and they're just like, oh, this is really good. Would you want to like join our internship? And I was like, okay, yeah, sure. You know, why not? And so I felt like they were kind of like 50-50 because the video was all right. You know, like compared to what I do now, it's 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 not as good. But, you know, you got to start somewhere. And so the video was all right. And I really wanted to prove to them that I could do something, you know, amazing with like this. So what I ended up doing was I went out of my way. I didn't tell them anything. And I went to Target and I bought school board posters. I bought a 12 pack of like monster cans, a fish tank, some green paint and like this thing that like you feed babies medicine with. And so I just filled it with paint and water so I could like inject like the the paint into the water and have this like cool effect. And so I filmed everything just like that, like it just in my uh, in my parents uh, kitchen. Um, and I had like I had to use like our clean water. And I like just used cheap Amazon lights again. Like that's all I had in some school board posters. And then I made what was like a commercial for Monster. And as soon as I showed it to them a few days later, I was instantly hired. And they wanted me to be lead in filmmaking at like this little production company in Riverside. And so I was like, okay, cool. And and here's a crazy thing. Cause like, you know, being an entrepreneur, like um, you start seeing how things can work with like having a school degree or not having a school degree. And this is where like, my eyes really opened up wide because the other person that was in charge at the time, they had gone to a university for four years and had a film degree. And now I was lead with just like six months of YouTube experience. And so like I saw the potential in that. And so I was just working there for about a year. And um, I just kind of started understanding like how to use a camera a lot more. And honestly, like I had the intention of wanting to leave eventually to start my own business. Uh, because, I mean, I kind of already had that mindset when I was doing my music. I mean, I was already an artist and doing all these other things. And so I didn't want to work for anyone. I wanted to work for myself. And so I just honestly stayed there to understand the business side of things. So like, how do you market? How do you reach out to people? How do you, you know, get the client to say yes? How do you negotiate? How do you do like, you know, there's so many other things that a lot of people need to like focus on, not just like hitting record on a camera or taking pictures. You know, I feel like you have to be a businessman or woman first before you're a photographer or filmmaker, you know. And so I was just understanding like these things while I was like also like filming little like commercials here and there and just kind of understanding the basics of filmmaking a lot better in a production set. And so eventually 
that's when I quit my job about a year later. And uh, I just started doing my own journey. I financed uh, this camera actually right here. So uh, this is my A7S III. I financed it with almost no money in my account. And uh, I was like, you know what? I'm going to quit my job and I'm just going to go for it, you know, and like screw it. And so uh, and then I just started going out there and uh, marketing. And um, little by little, I started gaining a lot of clients just like that. And then now I'm here. Yeah, that's amazing to hear. And I am so sorry about your music career and your, you know, injury and everything. However, you know, if that not working, you always can find something that worked for you. And I'm very happy that videography worked for you. And I think you're right about like people have degree and people don't have degree. The The only difference is like people have degree, they have, you know, the paper, the degree. However, I think in order to get success in business or anything, you need to have creativity and also, you know, go out of your way to actually make things happen. Just practice and make things happen. Because mm -hmm. you learn everything by yourself. You really don't need to go to school to learn you know the the skill because in today you know world you can learn everything just from the internet just looking at youtube or even now we have chat GPT, you can just ask hey chat GPT, can you teach me how to do you know videography how to start a business actually too so yeah and it's really amazing for you just to know um quit the job and start your own journey because not everyone have like the gut to do it because you know they scare they you know especially in you know creative industry because it can't it can be very uncertainty at times so really hard for for people to start a business and i really admire that you you know have the gut just to you know, I quit, I start my business because yeah. I am the same too. I think like last year we met, I just quit my job for about a couple months and I start to be an like individual. I start my photography and also my marketing on the side and I start to merge the photography in, and marketing into one. And right now where we have market start, you know, we do photography, videography and, you know, um, marketing on social media for business. So, yeah. Really yeah. love that. I think one thing that people need to honestly um, think about, and this goes to like anybody that's listening to this, um, uh, most of the people that are successful are the ones that fail the most, um, honestly. Uh, it's because they just keep going. A lot of people are like, no, this is too hard or like it's impossible or oh, you're lucky. It's no, it's not really that. It's just the fact that, you know, I got I got kicked in the butt so many times, but I kept getting up and kept trying, you know, like it's, That's just really it. You know, you just keep going. If, if someone like, you know, judges you or like ridicules your work, don't let it bring you down. Instead, use it as a lesson and try to understand what they were trying to say in a way where it can help you and that you can improve yourself. And then maybe next time that person will be like, wow, like you really have improved. Maybe we should do more projects together in the future. You know, it, it's really just like that. Yeah, I totally agree about that. Yeah. Beside that, um, can you share with us some of the biggest challenges that you have faced as a videographer and how do you overcome them? Yeah, of course. I mean, the perfect way to start is like when I quit my job, my God, it was so scary. Like, I just imagine you have barely any money in your account. You're you're over here. You dropped out of college and you're just like, I'm going to start a business. And it's just like, well, well uh it's like a lot of people when they start they usually have a foundation i really did not like i just kind of went for it like uh, off a whim like i i guess like from like the stuff that i had experienced with the surgery and all that i just thought you know life is too short i'm just gonna take a bunch of leaps of faith and trust in myself that i can you know achieve what i need to achieve and so some of the hardest things that i had to overcome in the beginning was starting to get clients like you know you know that's like one of the hardest things in the very beginning is like, why should they care about you? You know, like, what about them will improve like their business if you jump in, if you have nothing to prove? And so like some of those things that like I had to do to overcome that is I would have to honestly, like sometimes just BS it, you know, I would have to lie and I would tell them, I'd be like, no, like, trust me, like I know what I'm doing and like the stuff that you're like showing, it, it's great, but I can do it a lot better if you just let me in and let me do it for you. And that's kind of like the tactics that I did to like start gaining some clients 
And then little by little, once you start like growing a really big portfolio, then at that point, you really don't have to say that anymore. It's just proving it like it, your work speaks for itself. And so um, one of the biggest tactics that I did uh, in order to kind of gain the trust of some people is kind of showing them their competition. And so what I would do is like, uh, for example, I work with this one company. I'm not going to name them, but um, they sell a lot of clothes and like they ship it out in like this package and they're pretty big. And so why would a random kid who's like, you know, like not have any work want to work with them? You know, like what, what can he do? And so I got on a phone call with the CEO of this company and I told them, I was like, hey, like your videos are great, but everybody else does that. What are you doing that's different? And so they're like, oh, well, not much. You know, they, they can't really say anything. And they let me like, you know, speak my mind and like, let me be honest. And so I told them, I was like, what's something that, you know, you can do that's different than them? And they couldn't answer it. And I gave them the answer because I already knew I was a solution. I basically would give them a problem and I would tell them that I'm their solution to that problem. And so I would tell them, OK, cool. Well, what we can do is maybe create like these high quality videos, but still kind of keep it in the niche of like social media. So that way you can kind of promote it and you can do whatever that you need to do in order to push more sales and get more clients. Because here's a problem, like you can have a bunch of people just pick up their phone and, you know, start talking about the product. But almost all brands do that. So what is it that you can do that's different that not only will help you get more clients, but it will make you look way more professional than other brands. And I'm your solution to that problem. And so little by little, I would just start doing stuff like that. Um, I think another thing that I had to overcome was like financing and like, you know, trying to figure out figuring out like the money side of things. Because a lot of people, when they jump in, they think like they can just go film and all that stuff and buy equipment. And I no, like it's there's a lot more to it, you know, when it comes to like figuring out finances. And so sometimes you have to, you know, get a finance plan and then just hope for the best. But if you know that you can like, you know, pay it off, then go for it. Like if you think that, you know, a, a, a camera like this and a 24 to 70 can help you, then go for it. Because that's like a really good starting point for a lot of people to start filming or taking pictures. You have a wide angle and a tight lens, and then you have a good camera that can film and take at least decent 12 megapixel pictures, you know, like you don't have to get anything else. Um, so like trying to figuring out those kind of things is really important. And I think it was kind of a, a stride that I had to get through until, you know, I can start like buying other things and start like investing and getting other equipment. And then eventually, once you get to like a certain point, then you don't have to worry as much because then brands start reaching out to you and they would they would want to give you stuff just like to make content or sometimes they'll pay you for it too. And so that's something I had to like, you know, work through and uh, figure out as well. Um, what else? What else? Uh, oh, yeah, this one's this one. A lot of people are going to relate to being a Mexican and having like dropped out of college. Oh, my God. OK, so like with my parents, man. I, I'm in a Latin household. So uh, like my parents immigrated here. And so they came here for their children to, you know, thrive and succeed in like school, college and getting a typical job. And then with me, it's like, yeah, I'm the American born child and I'm dropping out of college. So it's like, like what? And so like to kind of show you the difference, I have a sister and like right now she's doing her master's program to be a PA and like one of the top schools out in LA. And then there's me who's a dropout. And so it's just like, what is it that, that you have to prove to like a Mexican household family in order for you to like, honestly prove yourself. And um, one thing that I told my parents is give me one year, just give me one year. And I like, I, it was basically like I was putting my work on the line and I told them, just give me one year to figure out everything. And I'll show you that I have potential to, you know, work with like amazing people and like create amazing projects all by myself. Like I, I never really had that much help. I just kind of understood from what I learned in the small production company. But after that, a lot of it was just, you know, kind of going out there and marketing. And then I guess I'll lead into the other thing that I had to work on was also the marketing aspect of things. And how do you reach with people? How do you get more contacts? How do you trust people to give you word of mouth in order to get more clients? And so in the beginning, you know, you can be very shy to ask someone after a shoot, like, hey, can you recommend me to people? You know, like you get nervous about it. But like eventually once you get over, it, it's like, hey, we had a lot of fun. Like we should hang out sometime. We should get some lunch. By the way, you should tell more people about it. If you love my work, why wouldn't your friends love it, too? You know, and so little by little word of mouth, it just kind of works like that. And like understanding just simple marketing tactics such as that. Yeah, um, I think one more. And this is kind of like the boring side of things, which goes along like the marketing. 
the amount of effort that you have to put in in the beginning to contact so many people and like it's a hassle like you have to put in so much work into sitting in front of a computer or being on instagram or just emailing people for days on end you know it's just it never stops i still do it to this day but it's one of the things that you have to do in order for you to get your name out there and so i remember one day it was like 10 hours straight and i was just scrolling through instagram and i would find a company i would email them i would dm them and then i'll keep going and then i'll do that all day and here's the thing like i i'm gonna pull up my calculator right now because i actually did this a long time ago so i i reached out to that day 300 companies okay and i was oh barely starting yeah 300 companies in one day like i was going ham i absolutely lost my mind i don't know how many energy drinks i drank but I was going through it. So I, I did 300 companies and only two responded and said, yes. What's the success rate on that? It's below 1%. It's below 1% of success rate. So let me see. Let me see. Two divided by 300. So that 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 is my success rate. So it's 0.006%. That's what my success rate was in the very beginning. And it just, it just has to be like that. You know, a lot of people are going to ignore it. Some people are going to say, we already have somebody. And then some of them will be like, you know what? Yeah, sure. Why not? You know, like, what can you prove? And so that's how it started off. You know, like my success rate in the beginning was below half a percent. And now it's a lot higher because I have more of my work to prove for myself. But that's just kind of one of the things that you have to get through is like, you know, having to push through like these leaps and like and like all these boundaries and like understanding that if you just keep going, eventually it will start working out. But it's funny, like there's a tipping point and then sometimes you just want to stop. But then if you just do like maybe one more email, that email could have been the one, you know, you never know. And so like, that's just one of the things that I had to like, you know, mentally like fixate on myself and like, you know, push myself to just keep, keep on going. Like no matter what happens, like eventually someone will say, yes, you just got to keep going. It doesn't matter. And I still have that same mindset up to today. I still do it that way. Some people still say like, no, even with the stuff that I do today and just like, like, bro, like I like, look at the stuff I do. But then they're like, oh, I already have a videographer. And then I tell them like the problem and then the solution to that. And they're like, oh, I still have a videographer. They're like, nah. I'm like, okay, cool, fine. And then to the next person, you know? But yeah, that's that's some of the things that I think I had to like kind of push through and like um, go through. But definitely one of the hardest ones was being in a Latin household. My God. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I cannot imagine that. So yeah, I really, you know, um, related to this, especially where, you know, you have to add a and in the beginning, you had to outreach to a lot of people and you got a lot of rejection. But I think one thing that separate you from other people is that you don't stop. You have to keep going. And I think a lot of entrepreneurs out there have the same mindset as well, because, you know, when you start, you have to start from zero. You have nothing. However, you have to, you know, find the best way to marketing and find the best way to reach to people. And I think that's really smart of you to, you know, outreach to them by email, asking them if they need it and do that. You know, a lot of times, company have a department to do that, just to do outreach. And when we start a business, we have to do it all by ourselves. And, you know, I I still have the same thing with you because when I first started my business, I remember where I have to be on Facebook all the time to go over many different Facebook groups to say, oh, this one have a gig and I apply to all of them. And mm -hmm. again, the success rate is very low. However, when I have one or two clients, it's really motivate me to keep going. And I think that's it. And about, you know, the camera stuff. When I first started as a uh, photographer, I didn't have a camera, but I still want to do this. So I borrow camera. I, you know, I lend camera. I, I mean, borrow and I borrow lens from different people because I try to make connection with people because I don't have a camera and lens or anything, any equipment, but I do want to start. So just go out there, borrow things and follow people. And that's how I learned. And I, I just have, you know, officially for my, you know, whole camera lens and everything last year. So mm -hmm. I started journey without anything. And I really, you know, uh, understand that because creativity, especially 
in photography and videography, the equipment is so expensive, especially when you first start, right? Mm -hmm. You need you need like different lens for like different project, and how do you get that, right? So yeah. either you have to borrow, or have to finance it, or figure something out because, um, I mean, you can use a cheap camera and cheap lens. However, the result gonna be different. And mm -hmm. when you work with um, high resolution camera, you gonna learn different things also. So yeah, really related to that. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, beside, I saw that your work recently featured on the Super Bowl commercial. So can you walk us through the process of creating, you know, a video commercial like that for such a high profile event like the Super Bowl? Yeah. So it was for Drink Prime. Uh, honestly, it's crazy. Uh, like times have changed. Honestly, times have changed. And so, you know, a lot of people would assume like, oh, it's this whole high production thing. And like, I had to go and like meet an A list actor, like whatever, like, no, it's, it's really, it's so different nowadays, like how things are achievable. And so I'll be very honest with you. It's, it's going to motivate a lot of people. And when they hear this kind of stuff. So let me go from the very beginning. How did I even get in touch with prime? Here's a one in a million chance thing that we were talking about, like how you just have to go for it. And, you know, even if you sound crazy, like maybe it'll work. And it, and then eventually for me, it did. So here's a story. I was sitting in my room and I was watching uh, Impulsive, the Logan Paul podcast. And so I was just watching it. And then he announced with KSI that they had Prime. It, it, like my brain went like a thousand miles an hour and I like went into business mode and I hopped on into Instagram. And I saw that all they had was pictures. And I was like, there's a problem. There's no video. So what I ended up doing was I went to Facebook. I found Logan Paul's um, Facebook page. He had an about uh, section and in there was his email. So I just sent him an email. I put a bunch of fire emojis like I was just going ham. And I was just telling him like, hey, dude, like uh, amazing stuff. I'm glad that you guys are like releasing like a drink against Gatorade and all this stuff. But you don't have a video let me make you the video and so you know like at the end of the day like i just sent the email and i was like you know what like it might happen it might not most likely it won't this guy is extremely busy but at least i know that i put in the effort to send him an email and so that's fine the next day when i wake up i see logan paul in my email list and he responded and i was just like <laughs> like i was like losing it because like here's the thing you know how i quit my job right Prime was one of my first clients. Like, like, like that's crazy. Like one of the biggest companies right now on earth was one of my first clients. And I'm, I'm still living with my parents in my bedroom. I just sent him an email, you know, just in my pajamas and he responded. And so he ended up telling me that, yeah, the drinks are like really vibrant and like, we would love for you to create something with it and I'll send you a bunch of drinks. And so about a week or two later, I get a knock on the door from like uh, the, the shipping company and I just see like like 60 drinks in front of my front doorstep and it's just prime. And I was like, okay, so this is legitimately happening. And so here's the thing, you know, sometimes like I was still starting off. I didn't have much to prove. I'll be honest, you know, that, that, that like monster video that I told you about, how I only filmed it with like black school board posters and some cheap Amazon lights and a Fuji at the time. That was a video that convinced Logan Paul for me to film the first Prime commercial. Wow, that's crazy. Like, like just school board posters. Like, I couldn't even afford a savage background at the time. It was just like, I went to Target. And the fish tank that I had, I honestly returned to Petco. I didn't have the money to, like, keep it. And so he responded and, like, sent me the stuff. And so I was like, okay, cool, I'm going to shoot the commercial now. And so my goal was to finish it in one week. Like the drinks arrived at my house. I had no plan. So I went and got into uh, my art list account, found a cool song. And then I always let the music motivate me to create the video before I even think about what I want to do. And so after I got the song, um, there was no budget. I'll be honest. I didn't get paid at the, in the beginning. I didn't get paid um, to make this. I just had told them I'll make them the video and they agreed. And that to me is already like a million dollar opportunity. And so... um. I got all the drinks and then I ended up spending a lot of money out of my pocket, out of my pocket to make them a really good video. 
And so I ended up buying a bunch of lights. I got like an Aperture 120D. I got backgrounds. I ended up buying a Lawa lens to like make sure I can get some cool shots with that, like, you know, like getting in the bottle or something. And so I ended up just writing down all these ideas. I bought all these things like within the span of two days. I lost $3,000 in my account to make this video. And so, um, yeah, I filmed it. I did it all in my parents' garage. Everything was in my parents' garage. Uh, I tell everybody it was in my studio. My studio was just a garage. And so I did it in the studio. In the studio. And um, after I finished, I wanted to also incorporate how this drink is for everybody. And so I grabbed my best friend. I grabbed my sister, my cousin, my uncle, and my godson. All family and one friend. And so my friend was lifting weights. So it's for young people who go to the gym. And then my sister was a student, so she was studying drinking prime. My uncle's an old man, so old people can drink it too. My cousin, he loves gaming, so I got him drinking the blue one in like this blue room. And then my godson, I got him drinking the green one. And like it looked like it's for everybody. It's for children. It's for adults. It's for students. It's for athletes. It's for absolutely everybody. And so after I sent them the video, and this was about... Four days later, I did the video in about two days. I edited it all in one day. And then the next day I sent it to them. And that's like, that's all it took. And so um, um, they just responded and they were just like, oh my God, like, this is amazing. Like, this is like not what I had expected. And so they actually used it uh, to promote it on like t on television. And then they also had used it for social media posts. They had it on Twitter for some time and it was like pinned on their account. And like it's been and then like I would get people like s sending me messages like, hey, I just saw the video you made on TV and they're from like Canada. You know, it's just like what? Wow. Like, OK. And so like that's how it happened about a year and a half ago. A year later, I had already built like this whole reputation. I had gotten so many people to work with. I One of my other biggest clients is ZHC. While I was out in Texas filming for ZHC, I get a phone call. And so in this phone call, it's again the manager from Prime and the editor um, that's for Logan Paul. His name is also Gio. And so they called me and then they said, hey, uh, we wanted to ask about getting universal rights for the video that you filmed over a year ago. Um, we want to use it for universal rights for like a commercial use. And I was like, cool, what are you going to use it in? And they're just like the Super Bowl. And I'm just like, the what? okay okay yeah sure <laughs> like yeah let's do it you know and then finally i got my money's worth i got way i got paid way more than what i had spent over a year ago it, it paid itself off and so um the, i got the contract signed and then about a month later is when the super bowl happened and then i had my family with me and everything we we're just watching the tv and then the prime commercial came up after like the the pledge of allegiance or uh, I don't know the the anthem sorry, and uh, I just saw like two of my clips put into like this entire montage for the commercial, so I was just like, wow, like I got stuff that was filmed in my parents' garage in a Super Bowl commercial by sending this man a cold email with having nothing but a cheap like commercial from monster that's not even sponsored by monster and so that's honestly the true story behind it like it, it was just something that i had done and sent him a cold email with like absolutely no hope and having no skills to show he so agreed somehow i gave them an amazing video and a year later they just you know they said you know what we want to use it uh partly for the super bowl and then they ended up putting in like this montage where they had other people who filmed also like put in their work. They had my work in it. Mine's in the beginning of the commercial. And then they had a bunch of other like montages and stuff that they had done throughout their like a career as prime uh, within like the last year that they've been active. And it just happens that one of the best things that they had filmed was my work and they use it in the Super Bowl. But that's that's the story behind it. That's so crazy, and I'm so happy that you finally get paid by them because you put a lot of hard work and also invest in the project and everything. But yeah, Thank you. that's amazing. Yeah, um, yeah. So, how was your work on the Super Bowl commercial feature that impact your career as the videographer, and that uh, what opportunity have opened up to you since then? Good question. So, um, 
it's opened up a lot of opportunities, uh, honestly. Even when I just did the stuff with Prime, it did too. Um, but the um, what had happened is ZHC, this dude, friends with Mr. Beast, you know, and then like he is like 25 million subscribers on YouTube. And I had actually promoted this Prime video a year ago, like on Instagram, and he followed me. And so we got in touch after that. And now I fly out to Texas to film him montages. And because of that, now I had like work that I did with him that was shown in Coachella. So now I had stuff the same year in the Super Bowl and shown at Coachella all in the same year. And then I was doing it for like this big YouTuber. And like, if you go to, um, he has a video where he's uh, like, sh like painting a hundred iPhones. And then somewhere in that video, I actually pop up and I'm actually like directing him. And then like, we're making a montage together. And so that was one of the opportunities. Another one, which is uh, more near and dear to my heart. I had actually gone to NAB and I was uh, at the event, like meeting a lot of brands and like getting in touch with people. And I actually got in touch with Zayun too. I have something right next to us that I can't talk about, um, but I'm going to be making them part of their campaign. Um, but that something that's more near and dear to my heart was the fact that I had this reputation of like having my work shown in a Super Bowl and also doing work with Logan Paul and Prime. I uh, the people that I watched on YouTube when I was recovering in bed, like the people that I looked up to, I met them at NAB and I told them, thank you, you know, for being an inspiration. And when I told them what it is that I had done, they were just like, dude, you're doing better stuff than I am. And you're looking up to me. And it's just like, what the hell? And, and so, yeah, I just it just like like kind of became this whole thing. And so now I'm in touch with some YouTubers. I'm in touch with Ryan Cow. I'm in touch with Brandon Washington. I'm actually going to have a meeting with Armando as well about two weeks from now. And he's a uh, really well known in like the filming space as well. And so like all these people I'm making friends with just because I told them like, you know, like, thanks for being an inspiration and telling them like, you know, what it is that I do. And I got in touch with uh, Condor Blue. So they actually had given me this stuff about a week ago. And um, That's nice. yeah, yeah, they just gave it to me. They didn't even say I had to make any content. They just gave it to me as a gift. And so they were being really sweet about it. And at the at the event at NAB, um, I was around the corner booth and I had gotten in touch with uh, Dave Mays. His name's actually David Altazar or Altazar. And so he's known in Kinotika, which a lot of people know what that is. Or there's also Indie Mogul. And so like that was a big thing at the time. And so he was a spokesperson for that YouTube page. And me and him actually got really like close at the NAB event. And then I got invited to go eat in and out with him and some of the YouTuber friends. And then the next day I get invited by Condor Blue and I'm inside of like a private event. And now I'm surrounded by everybody that I look up to. So Gerald Dunn is there. Potato Jet is there. Ryan Cow is there. Make Art Now is there. Dave Mays is there. And then just all these other amazing people. And I was just like, this all happened because of the hard work that I put in. Like now I'm surrounded by the people that I was looking up to when I was recovering from surgery, when I couldn't even walk. And I was just watching them in TV and like trying to learn. And now I'm in this room where like I look up to them, but they're also looking up to me because I was able to achieve so much in just like a year and a half, you know. And so that was another opportunity. And I'm excited to see what's to come because of that, because now I have more friends. And, you know, it's always good to want to outsource and do stuff with other people. Like I, I've always been alone with filming all these things. But the more I get in touch with all these friends and like making connections, it's good for you because then now you can hang out with these people and you get invited to more opportunities and, you know, build better relationships with brands as well. And that's just more more work for you to do and just a better opportunity to, to keep this being a full time job, you know, and so. That was another opportunity. Uh, like I said, Ziyun had another opportunity. And so they gave me some free stuff and I'm going to be filming a commercial for them as well. And uh, just, you know, just stuff like that. Like, honestly, one of the biggest ones has just been like ZHC and then uh, the Coachella stuff and then just crazy stuff like that. But I that's kind of the doors that it's open, like doing stuff with Prime and getting my stuff shown at the Super Bowl and just having, you know, being known as the guy that made the first prime commercial and knowing that it was filmed in the in like the garage of like that dude's like house you know like that's and being shown at the super bowl in a garage like it's just insanity but it that's just where we're at in content now you know super bowl stuff can be shown in your garage apparently so yeah <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, that's insane. But again, like we make art because of our creativity, not because like we have the studio or we have like, all the thing that we needed. So I think you do a very good job with that. And I'm super happy for you to right now you are you know, happy with where you are, making more friends, making more connection, and having more, you know, gig coming in, and super happy for you. Yeah. Thank so you. with that, do you have any advice to give out for the videographer who just started or who want to start? Yeah, of course. So I was in your shoes. I understand. Uh, just know that it can be hard at times, and some days you feel like maybe it's not worth it. But just know that it is that even if it feels like you shouldn't do it, just, you know, get off, stand up, maybe take a walk, relax, calm down, sit back down and get back to it. You know, like that, that's all it is. Like, just keep going. Like, don't stop. I mean, I like I said, like, I'm I'm still relating to a lot of people today, like where I still live with my parents, you know, and I still like, you know, reach out to so many people and I still get declined. And it's just part of the process. Like, it, that's just part of it. Like, you just have to keep going. Never give up. Like, just just don't do that. Like, if you give up, who knows what could have happened tomorrow? You know, like, what if tomorrow was a day? It might not be tomorrow. It could be next week. But if you stop, you're never going to find out, right? So just, you know, never never give up on yourself and keep trying. And even, like, um, like how you had said, like, well, I didn't have a camera when I started. You would ask friends for it. Or, you know, you have a phone and a lot of people had made successful careers out of filming on TikTok with their phone. And then now they get paid like huge contracts to do like, you know, partnerships with companies. Like anything is possible. Right now is like the golden age of like content creation. Right now, content is king. And so everybody always needs content. Everyone always needs to have content made. That is how you build an infrastructure with business. That That's honestly the truth. No one will know who you are if you don't have work being like, you know, pushed into like social platforms or television or whatever it may be. You need to have it be made into a video or taking into pictures so that people can visualize it after the fact. You know, if like if there's a brand and they just start as a company, but they don't do any marketing, no one is going to know who they are. So you could be their solution to that. And so if you can figure those things out and you can like, you know, get in touch with people then just go for it. And don't be scared to do stuff for free. My, one of the first things that I did was I, I got paid by getting a free Pokeball and a t-shirt. That was my, that was my paycheck, you know? And so like, that's where you just got to start. Like you, sometimes you have to do stuff for free. Sometimes like even with myself, I did the prime stuff for free in the beginning. You know, there you're like, well, that's a huge company. Like, why, why would you do it for free? Well, what if they had turned me down if I started charging money from the beginning? You never know. You know, it could have been a lost opportunity. Like if you see the potential and maybe doing stuff for free, do it. But I do recommend if you don't see the potential in it, then maybe think twice about maybe wanting to charge. Um, that's one thing that I had learned. Um, one of the lessons that I had learned because of that, I used to film like in car events and stuff like that. And so like I would go to car shoots and there's always people taking pictures. that are always filming. So when someone reaches out to you after the fact and they're like, hey, your content was cool. Can we do like a shoot? Yeah, sure. My rate is this. Oh, no, I'll just reach out to somebody else and like, you know, they'll take the pictures for me. You know, like you kind of you, you'll start figuring that stuff out the more you start stepping out and you'll realize like who you should like use your time very wisely and who like you should maybe decide like giving them a rate and seeing if they will respond or maybe the potential of just doing it for free because of the what can happen after, you know, the after effects of it, like with me and Prime. Because of that, now I have a full-time job, but I don't even work with Prime. Like, it was just an opportunity. I took it, and now I can, you know, advertise it to people. When I go and market and say, like, yeah, I'm the guy that filmed the first Prime commercial. Yeah, I'm the guy that had my work shown at the Super Bowl. Yeah, I got in touch with ZHC. Yeah, I did myself with Coachella. I filmed a private event with NFL players. I filmed at the red carpet with people from, like, The Bachelorette. You know, like, all these things, they just happen. And so the more that you start, like, you know, getting more people and, you know, there's this thing is, can I cuss here? Or is it like, no, no cussing. I don't know if, if that's okay. You can do it. Yeah, okay. 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 You can just bleep it out, I guess. So one of the things that one of my friends and I had like agreed on is there's this phase that's called the eat shit phase. Okay. You just have to eat shit. 
And and like it's just that's just how it is. If you if you're gonna be an entrepreneur, you're gonna go through the eat shit phase, and it's okay. Everybody goes through it, but the people that don't succeed are the ones that give up. And then they just say like, no, it's not possible. Like it, no, it is possible. But you have to go through that eat shit phase before you start seeing results. And so like that's something that I figured out throughout like my experience. Luckily for me, I did get it fairly quickly because you know the 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 type of work that I show like on like you know what I have in my portfolio and all that it looks like ten years of experience, but I squished it into like a year and a half. Um, but it's totally possible if you just try. Like I had no filming experience three years ago. I didn't even know how to use a camera, and now I'm over here. I actually, uh, I guess, the random news just before this call. Uh, you know how we had extended it a few minutes? It's because I was buying a red camera. I'm getting my first red camera. And so now I'm, uh, yeah, yeah. So now I'm getting a cinema camera and I'm going to the next level of like content creation and wanting to do even bigger projects. Cause now the goal is that I want to build like a company with a team and having a cinema camera, you obviously need a team, but yeah, that's the next step because I mean, I went as far as I could making content with this, you know, all the way up to a Super Bowl. So what can I do with a red camera? What can I do with a cinema camera? But you know, this is stuff that you should think about like in the future, once you're like, once you have a solid foundation with like how to market and how to film and how to connect and how to do all these different things before even wanting to jump into decisions like getting a camera like that. And so, you know, right now, if all you have is a phone, use it, you know, use it, like go out there, take pictures of birds. I don't know, like you if you have a dog, go go out there and film your dog having fun, learn about composition you know, and then you'll understand in a crazy scenario if someone's running around, oh, I've already filmed my dog before. It's fine. Like I've already gotten practice and, you know, as simple as that. It's really just practice, 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 practice and keep going. Don't give up. But just know that you're never going to be perfect. There's always room for progress. And so if you can understand that, then you know that you can get better each and every single day and that you will improve and then that you will see results. But just don't give up. There's always room for improvement and there's always more to come i promise you that thank you that's very inspiring yeah. so thank looking you. ahead do you have any goal or any project that you want to share with us for your videography career yeah sure so a lot of stuff that you see now that i create is mainly uh fast-paced engaging content maybe some stuff that's been like commercialized but the next step is obviously like what i just told you like i just got my red camera so now I want to start building a company that is more affiliated with even higher quality content that's like shown like specifically for big brands like, you know, like Nike or Adidas or Reebok or even Monster, you know, maybe like now I can do it for real this time, you know, not film with the school board poster. I can actually film at like, you know, Monster headquarters and get some like athletes to go ride bikes and do tricks and stuff and film it with, you know, like all this stuff. So that's kind of like the goal that I want to push towards now. I feel like I've gotten the best out of the best that I could being a solo operator. But my goal is to slowly start building, you know, this empire of like people and like having just this team of like amazing like filmmakers and photographers that I can like, you know, tell them like, hey, we're going to go film here now or I need you to go film this. I need you to go do that. And then I will go do this, you know, like they're like and then just start getting all these projects and then just, you know, becoming com basically unstoppable, you know, like that's the goal. And so that's kind of the goal that I want to keep doing. Besides that, still do what I do with like this camera, you know, like I, I still want to go out there and I still want to create this fun content. I mean, it never would have happened and if, if I never did it with this camera. So why would I let that go? And so I would continue, you know, wanting to build that and then also building a company where I can do a lot more high quality content that's shown for television, short films and that kind of stuff and uh, see where it goes from here. But honestly, I am very excited. And that's kind of the goal um, in terms of like who I would want to work with or what's my ultimate goal. I don't have one. My ultimate goal is just to be better than who I was yesterday. Because here's the thing, and I, I have ran into this, and this is important for some people to uh, hear out. If you set a certain goal and you achieve it, you're going to feel a little lost after. Because you're like, oh, uh, well, what do I do now? I achieved it. I did it. So what now? The best thing you can tell yourself is that you just want to be better than who you were before. Because if you if you are better than who you were yesterday, then cool, you succeeded. 
now you have to do it again tomorrow. And so it never stops. It never stops. And so then at that point, you have an ongoing goal. And then you're just going to keep improving and realizing that there's just there's just no stop to it. Because in the past, my goal was to film for Nike. OK, that was one of my goals. But now that I filmed with Prime, I'm just like, well, Prime is bigger in a certain way because it's it's like it's kind of like it's everywhere and then more people would want to get it and it's always sold out everywhere and it's involved in not only like the product side of the world but it's also in the influencer side of the world with logan paul and ksi so then when i realized that i achieved that i was like well is nike really the ultimate goal at this point like now nike just sounds like another like job like prime you know and so now i kind of just told myself that i would just rather be better than who i was yesterday and then at that point it never stops you're always gonna have to improve if like if you look at your work a month ago and then you do something now and you look at it and you're like oh yes i've improved in this and that but i can still improve on maybe on this other stuff then next time you can then improve on those things and now you you just keep going you're going to keep finding things that you need to improve on even if it's as simple as like a simple color grading technique or you know framing thing something a little bit differently like there's always there's always room for improvement or wanting to do stuff and incorporating things and um but uh yeah that's just like the, that's the ultimate goal for myself is just to keep being better and then see what this red camera can do for me now so yeah yeah that's amazing and i agree with you that if you want to be unstoppable, you need a team because right now you do everything by yourself can be a little bit overwhelming. However, yeah. if you want more and more project coming in, you definitely need a team for that. And I guarantee you once you have a team, your nothing can stop you with your goal and everything. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I somehow I've achieved all these things without a team, but it, it's very draining. It's It's exhausting as hell. But it, I mean, it is possible, but now imagine doing the same stuff, but with the team, who knows what I can do now. So that is the next step. But yeah, I, I am excited to see what's to come from this. That's amazing. Okay. Nice. So that's bring us to the end of this episode. Thanks to Giovanni for joining us. So we hope this episode was beneficial to you. As always, thanks for listening for Supercharge with Digital Market Star. So if you enjoy our show, leave follow and rate and review us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And be sure to come back in two weeks for another discussion of business. So until then, this is Crystal. And don't forget, don't stop and keep believing. Peace out. <laughs>